highlight of Meghan Markle's recent second win against the Daily Mail against their appeal to overturn the decision of her privacy case. Of course, Meghan Markle congratulated herself, she congratulated her team, and she basically said that this was a step in the right direction towards people challenging the overpowering influence of the media on celebrities' personal lives. She was, of course, really happy with the decision that she should not have to stand trial publicly and that she has been able to go unchallenged even though she was outed as a liar for everyone to see. Subsequently, we have found out, which isn't really a surprise to any of us, that she did actively participate in the writing of Finding Freebies, and she also did proactively participate in constructing a letter with the full intention of it being leaked regarding her father. So a leading human rights barrister called Jeffrey Robertson has basically said that this case will set a precedent for future privacy cases regarding celebrities and public figures and he believes that this is actually a step in the wrong direction because it is stopping the freedom of speech and stopping the press's right to challenge celebrities in regards to their poor behaviour. So he basically has said, the right to free speech must not be trumped by famous people's demands to shield their reputations. And he has given a stark warning after Meghan Markle's attack on the press which we of course know is not the last of her futile attack on the press this article of course is by the daily mail and i'm going to get into it this win is precedent setting proclaimed Meghan markle immediately after last week's court of appeal decision against the mail on sunday even though the court took pains to explain that it was not set in a precedent at all, the appeal court judges ruled that this newspaper's decision to publish half of a letter from Meghan to her father had indeed been a breach of her privacy, as she claimed. Yet her win was simply an application of laws that had been developed, in fact, created by judges over the past 15 years, and this is significant. This case has drawn attention to a dangerous increase in judge-made restrictions on free speech that increasingly prevent our society from holding the rich and powerful to account. Those laws have troubling implications for freedom of expression, and in this case, they were applied after a summary judgment, which is to say without a proper trial, where the facts and evidence would be closely scrutinised, now, there are loud demands that Parliament should intervene to strengthen our protections for freedom of speech. Our first law to protect privacy came in 1360, before the invention of printing to punish people who listen under walls and windows or in the eaves of a house to frame slanderous and malicious tales. Such eavesdroppers were deemed as common nuisance put in the stocks and pelted with rotten eggs. A right to privacy did not exist in the common law of England until 1998. However, when the Blair government adopted into British law the European Convention of Human Rights, Article 8 framed after Second World War to stop raids of the kind carried out by the Gestapo declared that everyone has the right to respect for his private and family life, his home and his correspondence. And this is what Meghan invokes in her claim against the men on Sunday. Yet Article 10 of the same convention proclaimed that everyone has the right to freedom of expression. Suppose these two rights were to cash. At the time, it was said that the court should apply a presumption in favour of free speech, that the two rights were not to be weighed against each other, and this assuaged the media's concerns. By 2005, this entirely sensible approach was rejected by the courts, 
However, in favour of giving privacy an equal value to freedom of expression, judges were required to perform a balancing act, weighing inevitably according to their own values the importance of each right as it applied to the facts of the case. And so the rich and famous were handed a new legal weapon which was relentlessly taken up by reputation lawyers. The problem, of course, is that these two rights cannot sensibly be balanced at all. Judges, for example, generally exclude any right to amusement or entertainment, or even the right to enjoy the hypocrisy of public figures. Instead, they solemnly intone that what is of public interest is not to be confused with what interests the public, a mantra that usually enables them to rule against popular newspapers. This newly developed law has had serious impacts on public interest reporting. There has been a recent upsurge in threats against publishers and human rights organisations from lawyers in London catering for foreign individuals who fear allegations of corruption or human rights violations. Truth is, no defence to a privacy claim and the cost of fighting an action is a serious deterrent to exercising the right of free speech. Moreover, the right to privacy is not merely subjective, but uncertain and unpredictable. For example, the Court of Appeals said that the Mail on Sunday could potentially have avoided liability by publishing only one paragraph of the letter from Meghan's father. But, however, which paragraph? And any selection would open the editor to the charge of cherry-picking, and where documents are concerned, it may be important to see them fully in their full context. Then there is the question of whether the letter was truly private in the first place, as there was no trial, the evidence was never tested. This approach puts the judge in the editor's chair, a position that in libel actions, judges have always declined to occupy for very good reasons. Megan's crusade against the media would have little traction in her preferred state of residence, where the First Amendment to the US Constitution passed because of its hostility to British sedition laws prohibits the making of any law that infringes on media freedom. There are privacy laws in the United States, but to avoid violating the First Amendment, they concentrate on gross invasions without newsworthy interest, such as publication of medical records. Their big debate over privacy will come in a different context next year when a Supreme Court packed with Trump appointees is likely to overturn Roe v. Wade, the right of women to have abortions, which is based on their right to privacy. Meghan might more usefully defend that right in the US after rather than continue her courtroom crusade against the media in the UK. Should Parliament intervene and define privacy in a statute? That solution is appealing, but it overlooks the difficulty of setting out the mirrored factual situations that could give rise to a claim. And reformers should be careful of what they wish for. MPs are self-interested. Any laws they draft might well stop publication of photographs of a future Matt Hancock breaching his own rules by embracing a lover in the privacy of his own office. The best way forward, which could be taken either by Parliament or the Supreme Court, would be to return to the position such that the right to free speech set out in Article 10 of the Convention should have a presumption in its favour over right to privacy laid down in Article 8. Finding a balance between two incomparable rights is unworkable and subjective. Instead, we should focus on the real question of whether the defendant crossed the line, that of humanity. This does not mean that we should go back to a time when privacy rights did not exist. They are a necessary protection for citizens against cruelty and unfair media demonisation, but they must be confined to cases where victims deserve compensation. The growth in privacy claims is just one aspect of laws that increasingly chill investigative journalism invoked by a growing breed of lawyers who promise the rich and famous to restore their often overhyped reputations. Even national newspapers struggle to 
pay the exorbitant legal costs of mountain aid defence, let alone small publishers and human rights organisations which strive to expose abuses and corruption abroad, but are threatened with bankruptcy by the prospect of legal reprisals in London. Increasingly, it may be said that Britain is not a country which has free speech. It has expensive speech. And that is the end of the article. That was a very interesting read. He has a point, you know, this is true. Everyone is playing and dancing to Meghan Markle's violin. So someone has said everyone involved is playing right into her hand. She wrote a letter to her father, told her friend about some of the con about some of the content so her friends can talk to the press about it, which then provoked her father's response in producing the letter to the press. The press then eagerly printed the letter and boom, she drew the last straw. Another person has said, it all depends on who is more important than anyone else. To me, you write it down, you have shared it. It is no longer yours, it belongs to the world. You want secrets, then they stay in your head. Another person has said, in my opinion, the British media should stop printing anything and everything about this couple as they want privacy, just hand it to them. The British press should concentrate more on Kate and William, who are an asset to the UK and often a pleasure to read about, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Another person has said, not many know this, but illustrators, musicians and writers sell the copyright, not the actual work. This suppresses the amount illustrators, cartoonists make which publishers reasoning they can sell their work privately, though not the copyright which remains with the purchaser. After the artist's death, the family inherits the original works, receiving royalties from its copyright. They can also sell the original work for profit because letters are considered created works. This law also applies to letters. It's the law. And publishers would hate it changed as they would be forced to purchase the original artwork while also paying royalties. Another person has said she should have been punished like anyone else would have been. And the last comment I'm going to read says the hazmats are so important dot 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 to themselves. I'll be back with another video. Bye guys.